and welcome to 3D Printing 101. My name is Chris McBain. I'm the Manufacturing Technology Manager here at Go Engineer, and I wanted to take this opportunity to help kind of educate a little bit about what 3D printing really is. So what exactly is 3D printing? 3D printing is taking a CAD model, some kind of 3D CAD model, on your computer, slicing it into layers, putting it into sections, then taking those layers and sending them out to a machine that will lay down material inside of those layers. So we can see here from the diagram, we start with the solid in the upper left hand corner, then we slice it, and then we bring it out to the machine and it lays down uh, material or it will center material. We'll get to that a little bit later about melting material together. So there's so many machines out there. You know, these are really the four major types of 3D printing. Or back, you know, back in the day they used to call it rapid prototyping or prototyping machines, but now it's 3D printing. So the first one is, you know, the polyjet machine. This works just like your printer, just like a regular paper printer. The head goes back and forth and lays down a polymer that is UV cured. And we're going to cover that one a little bit later also. Next is Fused Deposition Modeling, or FDM. What this is, is it actually lays down an extrusion of thermoplastic. Now, thermoplastic is just like any plastic, the plastic that your computer is made out of, ABS, polycarbonate. Uh, there's some different blends and things like that. There's no chemical reaction as this um, material gets laid down. It's just extruding through a hot tip. It's melting it through and laying it down. Then there's selective laser sintering, that's SLS technology. This is a powder-based technology. You have a big vat of powder, and a laser actually comes down and melts that powder. Um, the powder could be anything from plastic to metal to ceramic to glass. Um, there's a lot of different mediums for this. That laser comes down and actually melts it, melts that, uh, that powder together. Then you take it out, knock off all the excess powder, and then there's your part. Uh, this technology is okay. It's um, it's really messy, and the machines are very expensive, and the cost of ownership is pretty high because there's a lot of waste with the powder, and the powder is pretty expensive and stuff like that. And then there's stereolithography. This is the old tried and true. This is the one that's been around for a really long time. Uh, what that is, instead of a powder base like laser sintering or SLS, stereolithography uh, uses a resin and what it does is it has two or more lasers that come together at a certain point right on the surface of that resin and hardens it. Uh, there's a platen that stays maybe ten thousandths underneath the surface so it actually um, cures that resin on a ten thousandths layer throughout the part and then the platen will move down, the goo or the resin will, will cover it again, laser and that's how it, it creates the layers. Stereolithography, um, you know, it has been around for a while again very expensive machines. Uh, the lasers on them are, are very costly and definitely have a, a lifespan. And just dealing with that resin, I don't know if anybody out there has, has dealt with SLS, or I'm sorry, with SLA resin, but it's real messy. Uh, it's pretty caustic. Uh, you have to fully cure it before you get rid of it, stuff like that. That's why those bottom two, the SLS and SLA, those are really kind of you know, high-end, very specific applications these days, whereas the Polyjet and FDM technology are the ones that are really going mainstream. Those are the ones that you hear the most about. So let's go a little bit into the basic workflow for 3D printing. So how do you do this? Like you have an idea in your head and you want to have it printed. You want to have it prototyped. You want to have it in your hand so you can hold it. Well, everything starts with a CAD model. First thing we need is we need a computer representation of what your idea or what your model is. Um, you know, SolidWorks is, is absolutely great for this. Uh, we make, it makes solid watertight models right off the bat. Watertight's important because from the CAD model, you're going to go ahead and create what's called an STL model. Now this STL extension has been around forever. It stands for Stereolithography, one of the first um, uh, prototyping machines. And it, that STL model, what that does is that takes your model, whether it's a solid model or a surface model, and breaks it into surfaces. And it breaks it into triangular surfaces on, you know, kind of covers the whole thing and makes it what I called watertight. So there's no holes or gaps in, in those surfaces. It fills them all in with these little triangles. STL files are big. The problem is with the STL file is you can set the resolution so you can have very, very small triangular surfaces, 
or very large triangular surfaces. If you do the very small ones, you guys can imagine if you guys are all SOLIDWORKS users, actually any software, the more surfaces, the bigger the file. You know, I have gotten, you know, 500 megabyte files <clears throat> that were, you know, as big as a golf ball because when somebody saved out that file, the surfaces were very, very small on it. And they don't necessarily need to be. I'm going to cover a lot of this more technical stuff in the next uh, webcast uh, next Thursday. But I did want to talk about this today. So it goes from CAD model to STL file. Once you save that STL file, you take that STL file and you bring it into the printer software. The software you're seeing here is the Stratasys software for the FDM machines, but they're all basically the same functionality. You bring that STL model in and then you slice it into layers. Now, when you before you slice it into layers, you always orient the model. Which side is printed up? Which side is printed down? If it's, is it on its side? This is very important for structural integrity of the model. And that goes for pretty much anything. Really, it's all about structural integrity and surface finish. Depending on how you orient a model, no matter what the technology is, there's going to be a little variance in the Z direction to the XY direction as far as surface finish goes. They're all, they're all very accurate and the tolerances are pretty tight on all of them, but it's really the surface finish that, that you're going to see a difference on. So you orient the model, you bring, you know, once you bring it into the, to the printer software, and then you slice it. And basically what that does, that just takes cross sections at what the predetermined height is. So for instance, on this FDM software, I have a 5,000 step down. So every, it's going to break it into 5,000 layers. So it's going to take cross sections of those surfaces of 5,000. And then I'm going to do what's called process the build. So I'm going to, to lay that toolpath down on inside of those cross sections of the part. Once I process the build, I'll get a good idea about how much material I'm going to use, how long it's going to take. And again, you know, even though I'm using the Insight software as an example here, all the softwares for these uh, 3D printers are, are generally the same. It gives you mostly the same information. The lower end printers, the ones that you might have heard of, um, you know, the, the Cubify or the MakerBot or you know these homebrew. Um, printers now the software there obviously will not be as sophisticated as a software that comes with a machine a higher end machine so once we process the build then it's just as easy just to send it to the printer so what we do is we we basically make a program that's going to, to grow or build this part and then we're going to send it to the printer and the printer is going to go ahead and do it for us so you know, I mentioned MakerBot a little bit. You know, this stuff's in the news so much. There's so many systems out there. You know, how do you distinguish which one's for you, which one's not for you? What's the quality? Um, what's the surface finish? Will they work is another big one. I've, I've heard many stories from our customers as I, as I go around to shops and, and design houses about spending maybe $2,000 or, or $900 on a 3D printer to have it work for about a day and then it just kind of sits there because it just stopped working. You know, these are the kind of things to consider when you're thinking about purchasing a 3D printer. But what I'm going to I'm going to focus on today is I'm going to focus on the Stratasys line of 3D printers. That includes the FDM technology and the Polyjet technology. Now, Stratasys used to only was the big name in FDM. They did fused deposition modeling a leader in the field. They have a, a good product line going from the smaller printers all the way up to production printers. Uh, earlier in the year, they actually merged with Objet. Objet does Polyjet technology. So really, Stratasys now covers the whole gamut of what you're going to need as far as stability, surface finish, thermoplastics, polymers, um, the dire different durometers of materials, it's just, it's a great product line, and that's actually why Go decided, I'm sorry, that's why Go Engineer decided to carry the Stratasys line of printers. So let's talk about that for a second. So, you know, these Polyjet technology basically uses, like I said, a liquid photopolymer. And what a photopolymer is, a photopolymer is a, is a, is a resin, a polymer, that actually cures under UV light. The way that these work, and I'm going to cover this in a little bit, is as it lays down 
a layer of this photopolymer just like your printer would lay down a layer of ink it's followed by UV light so it almost cures instantaneously as it goes down now here it's mentioned support removed by water jet all of these parts as you grow them they need to be held up uh, the negative space needs to be taken up so you can build on top of it this is another big distinguishing factor between the the mid level machines to the very low end machines the very low end um, FDM technology and a lot of this other technology they don't have a separate support material so you're actually supporting your model that negative space is taken up with build material I can say that it is a huge pain in the neck to get that material off of that model it is it wants to bond to it the surface finish is terrible with these technologies the surf the support material and the model material two different materials they don't want to stick to each other and actually in the polyjet technology the support the support materials almost like a gelatin base it's like a real like soft material that just gets rinsed away with the with a little jet of uh, of water that's it with the FDM technology the way that that works is you know it lays down that thermoplastic I covered that a little bit thermoplastic you know everyday plastics ABS polycarbonate there's some exotic plastics like Altem for instance um, Altem is an FAA approved plastic that can be on board an aircraft because of its um, it doesn't set on fire it doesn't gas things like that but anyway these thermoplastics are what's extruded through this tip now it doesn't necessarily cure what it does is it actually hardens. It's just like almost like a hot glue gun. As it extrudes through, as it extrudes out, it's actually cooling as it extrudes. So there's no chemical reaction to to wait on or or to rely on hardening. It actually just it it hardens as it cools. And again with the support, the support material is a totally different chemical makeup than the model material. So what you have is two different materials that don't want to stick to each other, which makes it really easy to clean out that support material. Now each one of these technologies really does have its different advantages and capabilities and that's what I want to go into today a little bit. So let's talk about that FDM technology. The way this works is there's two what's called cartridges of material. The material is in the form of a very, not a very small, but it's about a, the diameter of a weed whacker string. Um, it's a round, it's a round extrusion and it comes spooled in a cartridge. These cartridges go into the machine and it's fed through these tips through the heater blocks and then extruded down onto the platform. You can see in this in this illustration we have the cartridges on either side. That filament goes up and through these drive wheels that pushes it through these extrusion tips. So how does it lay down the material? What it does is those tips actually go across the material and as it goes across it lays down that bead of material. Now in the software, when I was talking about that Insight software, that is where you can dictate how thick those layers are. Now we can go five thousandths, seven, ten, or thirteen thousandths, what we call slices or layers of material. There's pluses and minuses to each one of those. You know, as you go with a smaller slice the surface quality is going to be a little bit better but what you're going to sacrifice is a little bit of stability a little bit of rigidity in the model when you have that 13,000 slice that bead is going to be nice and thick and it's really going to want to have a it has a really nice purchase area for to the um, layer below it and the layer above it so the thicker the slice the more sturdy the model is going to be generally speaking and generally speaking, the smaller the slice, the better surface finish. It's going to look a little bit better. You're not going to see this, you know, the, the striations in the model um, as much as with a 13,000 slice. But you're going to you, you sacrifice a little bit of stability in your model. So we're going to watch a video here really quick of the FDM capabilities. So this is a one-to-one. -one. This shows it. That's about how fast it lays down the material. You can see it's going through that white tip. Uh, is the extrusion tip, the extrusion head. The material is getting fed through that tip and being laid down on the surface of this model. Now this is about halfway through this model. 
here's one that's going sped up a little bit. This is, you know, we, we all wish that our machines ran this fast. That would be great, but unfortunately they don't. Um, this is to show the support material and how this actually grows. If you look, there's some brown shiny material underneath the white material. That's the actual support material. That's the material that gets washed away in a solvent bath or uh, cracked off, uh, depending on the material that you have. And then there it is built up. So you can see you can have different size parts on a platen or what we call a build. Um, you can have a whole assembly. This is actually a wheel assembly that's built all on one platen. So let's talk about FDM applications. So we have this great technology, lays down this thermoplastic, it gives you nice sturdy parts. Really, what can I do with that? Well, you can do a lot of stuff with those models. You can do design studies. Um, you can print out assemblies. Is this going to work? Is this is my idea even feasible? Will the parts fit together? Will it will it act as intended? Things like that. You can study the both industrial design and engineering of a model. You can prototype parts if you want to have a functional prototype but don't want to make an injection mold for that part. Print out a part. You can check flow, airflow, um, form, fit, and function of the part. Um, you know different moving mechanisms. With the FDM technology, you can actually print out assemblies that move all in one print, all together. And the way you do that is when you take that assembly, you separate it by whatever that layer thickness is, say 13 thousandths, and it'll lay a bead of support material in between the parts of the assembly, and once that gets rinsed away, those assemblies can move. We're going to cover that in the next webcast. You can also do end-use parts with these. We have customers that are actually printing parts and sending them out to customers. Um, a lot of machine parts. The part that you're seeing on your screen is an Altem part that goes onto an airplane. This is a really great solution for making vents for aircrafts. You can imagine that um, fabricating a vent, especially a very complex vent, uh, takes a long time. Here they can just print it up. The inside of the vent is filled with the, build, with the support material that rinses away you have this 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 uh, really nice vent that is certified to go on an aircraft that's just one example of end use parts another thing you do is you know obviously presentation parts you want to show your customers or show your board or show your boss hey this is what i'm thinking you know this is how big it is this is what it feels like they can hold it in their hands with an assembly they can move it around they can say okay yeah we really like this and last but not least you can do production we have some customers that are running some parts, uh, 24, their machines are running just about 24 hours a day, just making production parts, uh, whether it's replacement parts for existing, um, for existing products or brand new products that they're getting ready to get to market. So that's the FDM technology. I want to cover the PolyJet now. Let's talk about this PolyJet technology and the difference between this and the FDM. So with the PolyJet technology, it's like I said, it works just like your printer that prints out on paper but instead of laying down a layer of ink it's laying down a photopolymer and it goes lays it down layer by layer now the layers that it lays it down in are so much more fine than the FDM technology three to four microns which is very 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 tiny uh, there's you have a whole bunch of different uh, materials diverse materials and there's multi-material they call product realism so you can actually while you're printing print two different types of materials on the same model. That's how maybe you've seen some of these example parts of wheels where the rim is a hard material but it has that rubber over molding. That's something that you're able to do with the PolyJet technology. So how does it lay down this material? I, I talk about it. Well you can see here that it has some inkjet heads and the polymers fed through those heads as that as the, the main head goes back and forth over the build platform. It actually jets that liquid polymer um, down onto the part. Uh, you know, it does a single support material for all model materials. You don't have to worry about when you change to a different photopolymer, you need to change the support. It does it all on one. So let's go ahead and we're gonna see a quick video of this. Go ahead and plane. So this is a, a, a kind of a, a compilation of a couple of videos. There's that head going back and forth. Notice those really bright lights on either side of the head. Those are those UV lights. That's actually curing the material as it puts it down. If you look here, you can see that you have some white blocks that are encapsulated in this kind of um, gelatinous um, material. 
that gelatinous material, the one on the right, that's the uh, that's the build material. I'm sorry, that's the support material. So here they're actually building a flute. I believe this was MIT um, on the Conex 500 machine. The Conex 500 is the biggest machine in the line. You can see it's just going back and forth. It's laying down micron thick layers of material as it goes back and forth over the part until the part's all done. There's the finished product. There's a little bit more on the Conex 500. This one's actually building some black parts. So you can see the different materials, different colors, things like that. Um, there's the Z direction. So this is actually a 6 tenth layer. And it's printing out at 600 DPI. And then here it shows the material and how the material is loaded in the front. Very easy, all in all-encompassing machine everything's right inside of it so let's talk a little bit about the polyjet application so okay you've got this print what's the difference in FDM where does it differ what do I get from polyjet so here are some of the applications that that most popular applications you know the animation and entertainment industry you know you have these really high quality models that just look really really nice when they're done really good surface finish very small layers it's really good for um, concept art, concept um, animation, things like that. Form and fit check, just like the FDM machine, you can print out parts and actually put them on an existing product and say, hey, is this going to fit? Is this going to, are the screw holes going to line up? Did I make sure that, you know, the holes are big enough or it's going to even fit or be able to be assembled? Exhibition and presentation models. If you want to convey to your customer, this is what your product is going to feel like after it's produced, or go to the boss and say, hey, feel this. Does it feel good in your hand? Do you like the color? Is there enough, say, rubber coating on this? Do I need less? Do I need more? Things like that. You can also do some, some functional prototypes on a polyjet. Now, if they don't do thermoplastics, but they have what's called ABS-like material. It's not quite ABS. It doesn't have the same chemical makeup as ABS, but what it has is the strength properties of it. So you can see the green material in the bottom right-hand corner is their ABS-like material. It's pretty good for some functional prototypes. Last but not least, you can do clear or see-through parts with the polyjet technology. With the object machines, you're able to uh, load in a clear material and actually make water clear or translucent parts with it. Uh, glasses, lenses, uh, you know, if you wanted to do an assembly where you had a window to see through to see what was going on inside of the assembly, that's something you can do with the polyjet applications. The clear and see through parts is something that's really unique to Object and they do a really, really, really great job with it. So we've covered two of the base, two of the technologies, the FDM and the polyjet. How do those fit into what you're doing? Which one of these machines do you need? There's different types of each machine. They go from the lower, the smaller build machines, which is what we call our idea series. If you just need a machine on your desk to, to, to make these 3D models that you can just hold in your hand or show somebody and then you know leave them on your desk and that's it, that's the idea series. Hey, I have an idea. I've got a CAD model. I want to print it out. The next is the design series. The design series is a both combines the polyjet machines and some of the FDM machines. This is the most this is where most people fall as far as what machines they're going to need in the workplace. Uh, these machines they have a little bit more capability. They're a little bit bigger. Uh, this includes that polyjet technology, the object machines. Uh, you know, here it's prototyping and it's um, really good high quality parts. You have a lot more functionality as far as, again, making clear parts, making very high quality surface model parts. Uh, with, these, with this design series of the FDM models, you have a little bit more uh, capabilities as far as how that model is made, how it's sliced, things like that. And last but not least is the production series. These are the big boys. These are the Fortis machines, the Fortis FDM machines. These are really um, geared towards large parts, uh, production maybe end use parts what they the, the term that we use is throughput so how fast can you go from CAD model to physical part that fat the speed of throughput is really important uh, in this line of uh, the Fortis line of machines they're really made to be the workhorses to get your parts 
bigger parts quicker and uh, more efficient also with the Fortis line that is where you get into the different materials the polycarbonates the ABS blends uh, all tens things like that and there's more materials every day they're thinking of more materials that can go inside of these machines especially with the thermoplastics so at Go Engineer, we carry the full Stratasys line of printers from the Mojo, which is that was which is the, the the smaller machine, all the way up to those Fortis machines that are really big, and everything in between, all the object machines, the full line from Stratasys. This is really important for us. You know, we saw Stratasys as a real good solution for our customers. Uh, it's a one-stop shop. Come to us; we'll be able to help you fit into the right machine, the one that's going to. To the one that's going to do what you need it to do. You know, we also, most of you probably know that we are uh, the leader in SolidWorks in the world, basically, as far as all of the different products. We do everything from CAD to product data management, electrical simulation, technical communications with 3D via. Um, you know, SolidWorks has a new electrical package. Well, I guess it's not new anymore. It was new earlier in the year, but it's it's a great package. We have experts on staff to help with any of your SolidWorks, and we also have solutions for electrical design and LTM, CAMWorks for your CNC machining. So if you need to go from your CAD model to your machine shop, we can help you with that. And last but not least, we do a PLM with our Agile uh, product. Just to let you know a little bit about our mindset at Go, uh, Go Engineer really gives you the power to innovate. We really fully believe that our customers are most successful when they're being innovative, when they're inventing, when they're when they're breaking down barriers and really, really working on that cutting edge of technology. That's why we really saw the potential in 3D printing years ago. We've been selling 3D printers for geez, years, years and years. Um, and we saw that early on and now it's starting to become mainstream so we really like to see our customers be innovative that's why we have that full product line of not just the 3d printers but the CAD and the cam and the electrical we want to give you the tools to be able to create and be successful you know we have over 25 years of experience with all of these products you know the CAD um, the SolidWorks especially we've been in that business for a very long time and you know this is very very important this last this last bullet point here is you know go engineer is truly committed to the customer experience we know that our success relies on our customers we want you to be successful we want to be partners with you in your success we want to help you succeed and really our success depends on you and we realize that and that's why we have these offerings and that's why we help you get educated on what's out there and help you along in the, in the process. So I just want to say thank you very much. Again, my name is Chris McBain. Um, I'm the Manufacturing Technology Manager here at Go Engineer. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, go ahead and just call this 800 number. We'll get you to the right person. And thank you very much.